magnet plane? Hold on. No, no, no. There's no bridge! Aloha, this is Trinidad, the island man, your island man, coming to you live once again from beautiful Hawaii here on the island of Oahu, bringing you, guess you, the best movie reviews on the entire island of Oahu. And yes, this is Trinidad, the island man, your island man. And uh, whew, last night um, for Tuesday, which the embargo lifts, I saw a special sneak screening of the Vin Diesel movie, the universal release of Fast and Furious 9, F9. Uh, now this stars, of course, as you've seen, all of the original, uh, well, most of the original cast, uh, minus, of course, Paul Walker, although he does kind of make a, an attempted appearance at the end, spoilers. <laughs> His car drives up at the very end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't actually see Paul Walker. Um, but uh, this stars Vin Diesel. Uh, John Cena makes his debut in the Fast and Furious franchise. And uh, Charlize Theron uh, returns. Uh, so without further ado, remember our rating scale. Shock a thumbs up. It's good to see. I recommend it. Shock a thumbs down. It's junk. I don't recommend it. And for Fast and Furious 9, F9, it is overall a shock of thumbs down. Um, now, you've heard some of the news uh, reporting that this has almost made $200 million uh, worldwide. It has broken the post-COVID uh, pandemic uh, box office uh, thanks mainly to China, where it's opened up pretty well, with at least uh, $150 million uh, over there. Uh, now, that being said, I'm sure that without the pandemic, this would have made more uh, overall around the world, uh, you know, already than, you know, in this uh, COVID world, especially worldwide, where some of the box offices still remain closed. Uh, now, Fast Five has not opened here in the United States yet. Uh, it was supposed to uh, this Memorial Day weekend, but it has been pushed back, I think, to uh, June. Um, yet the worldwide release has went on. And, uh, you know, and China is picking up that, uh, that bulk of, you know, the viewing duties. Um, now, does that mean that every hundred or two hundred million dollars of that money is going to go to Universal? Uh, no, uh, because they take a much higher percentage of the box office uh, money there in China than in the United States or the rest of the world. Um, I think the box office, uh, you know, Hollywood only gets about 25% of whatever the box office is in China that a movie makes uh, from Hollywood. <clears throat> now, that being said, uh, there has been some other reviews. It currently, I think, holds somewhere around a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes for Fast and Furious 9, F9. Uh, this is the weakest... Uh, in the franchise for a long, long time. And uh, I, I agree. I agree with that. Thus, the shock of thumbs down. Um, I really enjoyed Fast 8 and Fast 7 before that, and uh, even Fast 6, which is kind of where I got on board with it. Uh, so to go all the way back uh, to almost the beginning, uh, with the Fast and Furious franchise, which this one kind of does. Fast 9 does kind of take it back to its roots, even more of a roots in family than, uh, <laughs> than Fast 7 did, um, or even Fast 8. Um, we find the team Vin Diesel and his woman, uh, what's her name, um, uh, raising the child that Vin had had with the woman that had died in Fast 8. 
uh, by Charlize Theron. Uh, and uh, he's about four, almost maybe five years old. Um, you know, they're living a secluded, quiet life uh, out in the country on a farm um, at peace, per se, but still hungry for the fast and furious lifestyle. And fortunately, uh, their friends, uh, uh, you know, come, uh, Tyrese and, uh, and the other guys uh, come to help them out of their boring lifestyle. <laughs> uh, we find out that Kurt Russell's character uh, has been kidnapped, uh, presumed killed, possibly, uh, and that a, that once again, a super secret military weapon, uh, a, some type of computer virus called Ares, uh, has been stolen. And basically, this is able to hack into any computer and thus uh, spread to every computer, uh, giving whoever controls Ares the power to control those computers and thus military weapon systems throughout the world. Uh, they can launch nukes and do whatever. Uh, seems very, very almost like Fast 8 kind of in that scenario. Um, so it's up to Vin Diesel to come out of retirement, lead his team to find uh, these pieces of this, this weapon system. Uh, one of which was on the plane that had crashed with Kurt Russell. Uh, so they go to the jungles of South America to get this, uh, this piece. Uh, however, they are quickly ambushed by uh, rebels, rebel forces there, um, and also primarily uh, John Cena, which turns out to be Vin Diesel's brother. <laughs> and we get a flashback to how his, how their father had died racing on the track, his car explodes, and we find out in these flashbacks, a little bit of spoilers here, that uh, John Cena had done something to the fuel line in their father's car uh, that caused it to explode, thus killing him. Vin Diesel, instead of turning him into the cops or killing him himself, lets him go, but says, hey, you're dead to me, you never return home, right? And so he rides off embittered. And we find out that very much like uh, Vin Diesel, he had gained these tremendous military-like skills, leads a team of his own into what would seem to be world domination, and uh, goes out to find this weapon system. However, he is doing it, we find out, that he is hired by a third party, a rich, eccentric uh, billionaire uh, who wants ultimate control of the world. Uh, so he's not exactly his own man, John Cena. Uh, enter Charlize Theron, who from the trailers looked like the big bad guy who had hired John Cena to take on his brother. But no, uh, John Cena had captured her on bequest of this, uh, this billionaire um, and basically holds her hostage to help him obtain uh, this uh, weapon system, Ares. And so craziness ensues. Uh, from, you've see, what, from what you've seen from the trailers, uh, lots and lots of stuff take place in this movie. Uh, the car chases are spectacular as always. Uh, I'd say probably the beginning of the movie is the most believable, even with the rope bridge car jump. <laughs> <laughs> that you see in the trailer. Um, other than that, it does get into the realm of unbelievability and thus a shock of thumbs down, uh, especially when it comes to uh, these magnets that are used uh, throughout the streets of London uh, to pull cars to them and, and, and whatnot. Basically, this, this uh, system was used to knock out security cameras, uh, etc., uh, computer networks uh, within the area so that a uh, you know so that they could steal this secondary piece 
of, of this weapon system of Ares. Um, yet, Vin Diesel and his team use it to actually uh, pull cars and whatnot. Uh, totally unbelievable. As, yes, okay, maybe the magnets could be that strong. But, one, as they're driving through the city streets, metal pieces fly out and embed into this truck or onto this truck with the magnets. Uh, somebody easily could have been killed. Somebody with a backpack filled with, you know, metal stuff. Uh, even somebody on a bicycle or something uh, could have easily been pulled over, been caught in the middle of the shrapnel flying through the windows in, in route to the truck. Uh, magnetic pull could have easily been slashed. <laughs> but oddly enough, nobody but the bad guys are injured uh, by this um, electromagnetic uh, uh, weapon that uh, Vin turns to their side. Um, additionally, the final piece of it is that this weapon system, Ares, has to be launched uh, and connected to a satellite, thus it can get worldwide coverage uh, for all the computer networks throughout uh, the world. Um, there's no way to remotely hack into it and prevent it, so that leaves Tyrese and his friend to get a rocket car and fly <laughs> <laughs> up to these satellites uh, to do so manually. <laughs> and, um, and I just want to say that if anybody, uh, Jeremy Clarkson, um, Richard Hammond, sees this movie, uh, James May from Top Gear, BBC, I think you have a right and cause to sue Universal and this script for an I, you know, for stealing your idea of the Renault Robin blasting off into space that you had done on your Top Gear specials all so many years ago, as we have a red car that looks suspiciously okay. Yes, it has four wheels and not three wheels like the Robin, but uh, with rocket boosters attached to fly off into space, uh, which looks suspiciously like that uh, Renault Robin that you had had on your show all those years ago of Top Gear. So, you know, I don't know, that's a big chunk. And it's not far of a stretch to say, hey, somebody was flipping through the channels, saw this one moment all those years ago, puts it into their script now thinking, yeah, this is a good idea. We'll fly this car up to space fast, Fast 9, Fast and Furious going into space, boom! <laughs> eh, you know, I'm just saying it's not an original idea. Um, and even so, these guys fail to manually shut down uh, the upload of the Ares program to the satellite and thus end up just ramming the satellite with their car, uh, destroying the satellite and thus stopping the upload. So why doesn't Vin Diesel uh, or somebody on the team just get Kurt Russell's uh, government guys to shoot down this satellite? Easy, cheesy, no, not a Zack Snyder Japanesey, but a lemon squeezy and shoot down this <laughs> satellite before there's any issues like that and save the whole going into space uh, controversy. Um, why? I guess because it was exciting to see them fly off into space in this car. Maybe. <laughs> but it's obviously hurt them on the Rotten Tomatoes scale and, uh, you know, probably promoted why this is the worst one since way back in the, since the beginning of this uh, long franchise career of Fast and Furious. So there you have it. Um, overall thoughts, you know, I'll go ahead and go see it again in theaters when it opens up uh, wide, uh, just to, to see if my opinion changes. But right now I'd have to say, again, Shaka thumbs down for F9, Fast and Furious, Part 9. It just jumps the shark too much. 
uh, and does so in a very unbelievable way. Even Tyrese uh, acknowledges in this film that, hey man, we might be invincible. We've gone through all this stuff, traveled the world, explosions, etc. Not a scratch on me. And once again, not a scratch on him. You know, maybe we're superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, maybe they are. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, for them to finally acknowledge that in this movie, uh, you know, just seems a little bit too over the top. Uh, and honestly, it felt like this was the last one. It felt like this was going to be the final fan farewell for Vin Diesel and his team. And it kind of, if they don't make a Fast 10, uh, an F10, uh, I wouldn't blame them. Uh, you know, I think they've really shown in this one, they've taken it as far as they can go. Uh, Charlize Theron is still out there. Uh, she might come back. She might go into the Hobbs and Shaw franchise, which wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, but as far as, you know, I liked Hobbs and Shaw, but even I, in my Shaka Thumbs Up review of that movie, said it was getting too extreme well this one in fast nine fast and furious part nine f9 is so extreme it is a shock of thumbs down overall unfortunately so and they have nowhere but to go but into the hobbs and shaw part of this universe uh where super cybernetic cyborgs uh exist and are almost commonplace <laughs> all right thank you so much this is trinidad the island man your island man giving f9 fast and furious 9 overall a shock of thumbs down just because of they reach for the stars and actually get within touching distance of the stars uh in a most unbelievable <laughs> unfathomable way even for cars that jump across buildings into other buildings and uh, <laughs> jump rope bridges <laughs> like Tarzan swinging from the vine. It's just uh, a little bit too much uh, to go for. And uh, they're beginning to embrace their own silliness in this and wink too much at the camera while doing so. All right, thank you so much and aloha.